I feel burnt out. Uh, I feel like there's just a lot in motion, and I feel like there's just not enough hours in the day. I personally have hit a little wall of burnout. It's not just our body yelling at us. Oftentimes, that's because there's something else that's a byproduct of, of of uh, something that we're feeling. We need to be willing to do the same type of detox to avoid burnout. So there's a lot of different forms of what burnout can look like spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. It is so important though that when you start to feel the pain that you listen mm -hmm. and that you don't think, oh, I need to power through. I don't know if you've been feeling it, but as much as we've been traveling and focused on work and everything that we've had in motion, I personally have hit a little wall of burnout. And I thought, hey, this is something that I run into with other people on a regular basis. You ask them, hey, how are you doing? And they're like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm, you know, I'm overloaded. I'm tired. And with it being such a repeat theme and one that even I have felt a little bit of late, I'm like, what can we do to talk about the theme of burnout? And I thought, hmm. What are three quick tips that we can give individuals to help counteract burnout? So first, I want to know, are you feeling burnt out? Like, is this something, mm -hmm. if I'm feeling burnt out, are you feeling burnt out? Yeah, yeah, definitely at that point. And even talking a little bit, I've been catching myself saying, you know, to, when people ask me, how are, how are things going? Oh, I'm so busy. And it's like, it's not a... Um, it's beautiful because I'm grateful for everything we are doing, right? Yes. But is that the it, the, heavy, the answer feels heavy, and it doesn't yes. feel aligned with what's actually occurring, um, because there are multiple truths. You know, I I mean, yes, I feel tired. I feel burnt out. Uh, I feel like there's just a lot in motion, and I feel like there's just not enough hours in the day, and there's also needed time for sleeping and relaxation and downtime to recharge and it feels like 24 hours in a day just aren't enough hours yeah. and doesn't it feel like time <laughs> yeah. is getting shorter it, it does like feel that somehow yes. 24 hours now does not feel like 24 hours did like 20 years ago <laughs> yeah like, right what the, what? <laughs> and so on top of that you know of course like for me the, the work we're doing and and the action steps we're taking are extremely re rewarding yeah um you know in terms of what we're doing with with Suivera and the podcast and launching the community and getting everything set up for your book and and then I'm you know doing my master's program on top of that so and then attempting to have a social life and then attempting to have relationship uh, life and then <laughs> attempting to have you know go to the gym or you know cook food and you know there's like all the day taking take care, care of, of our uh, Bruce, Bruce Wayne <laughs> <laughs> at the same time <laughs> take care of our little Brucey um, you know so yeah it's there's there's just a lot there's a lot of things to to be a human it takes a, it takes a lot of effort yeah right. Yes. I was sitting there last night getting ready for bed and I'm like, oh my gosh, how do I take a time to even put lotion on my body and take care of those things? It's like, oh, there's just so much stuff. Mm -hmm. And so there is just this point where how do we help share that we all hit these points of just feeling burnt out and overwhelmed? But there are things that we can do. Like when we feel like they, we're the crock pot and we just need that little pressure valve mm -hmm. to release some of this pressure, there are things that we can do mm -hmm. that don't take a ton of time, but can help you not feel like you're about to explode, right? And so one of the primary things that I personally do, because we do look at computers and screens and things so much. And that contributes to fatigue and burnout. And it can actually get 
a lot of those like cortisol and other things flowing in your body that you don't really think about, but it does happen. Stress hormones start to fire because your body starts to get stressed out. And so if you just do a digital detox for a couple of hours at the end of the night, instead of logging off of all of your computers and devices and going straight to television and doing more of the intake of the blue light and such, even if you're wearing blue blocker glasses, you've still got a lot of stimulation coming in. So just take a couple of hours and disconnect. Disconnect fully from digital devices, from all of the chaos that's coming in at you, so that you can relax. And I don't mean like you have to go to a spa or do any of those things. You just need to disconnect in a way that is your form of disconnecting. Right. Cook a meal. Yeah. Walk your dog. Or walk yourself. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a dog. Um, you know, read. Um, do some yoga. Meditate. Um, just talk. Talk to your partner. Hang out. You know, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to fulfill that aspect and so it doesn't it doesn't have to be you know, oh well, how am i just going to sit here for an hour or two hours and not do anything it's you know that's a way yeah not to say that that is a bad way or a good way it just is a way yeah maybe that um, strikes maybe your fancy yeah, right yeah absolutely um and so there's yeah uh, but taking that taking that break from from electronics um um, I know we've even in the past uh, when we've talked with our friend who's also been on on the podcast a couple times, Anthony uh -huh. um, and uh, Anthony and, Balduzzi, and, fit yes. father. <laughs> yes, um, and uh, it's it's even like turning off the Wi-Fi for a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes you just need we don't realize that something that is like the lifeblood of our business and our social life and what it means to be human right now is absolutely Wi-Fi. It would be really tough uh, to to engage in this world right now without wi-fi and so but we don't realize how much of an impact it has on our form and on our th thoughts and our feelings and so even just taking time to just kind of disconnect from that and and just turn it off for a couple hours and just sit and feel and experience that kind of silence uh it's it's it makes a difference yes i mean how frequently like when the power goes out or your internet goes down do you know it before you actually know it? Because you can feel the amount of silence that happens. Not just because the electricity went out, but I know we'll talk about it. The internet will go down and you just feel the difference mm -hmm. in the frequency around you. And you're like, wait a second, what just happened? Mm -hmm. Oh, the internet went down. And so there's a certain amount of just energetic noise or frequency noise that happens from the, just the Wi-Fi that's blasting around you. And so when you can take time to just step away from all of that, maybe get out in nature if you can. We take walks every day and we talk about that. We just get out and take a walk just in the middle of the day or if now that it's getting hot where we live um it's going to be a little bit harder to do it in the middle of the day mm -hmm. but we can do it in the evening so that we still have that separation from all of the electronics from all of the, the chaos of the day so that we can connect on a deeper level as well so there's a need for that on at least, I mean, maybe you can't do it daily. And so don't put the pressure on yourself and like amp yourself up and get even more burnt out. Oh my gosh, I didn't get it in. But on a fairly regular basis, at least once a week, take that detox time because we're willing to detox and nutrition and do those types of things for our body. We need to be willing to do the same type of detox to avoid burnout for our mental, emotional well-being. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, 
yeah, I mean, you, you and I have even talked about um, even doing kind of like a, a vocal detox of actually taking a, um, you know, there's these things called silent retreats. Um, people may or may not be aware of them. And oftentimes people will go and it could be two or three days. It could be upwards of seven to 10 days, I believe. Yes. Depends on the retreat where you just, you are in silence. Yes, you're around people. Uh, and there's, uh, I've actually never been to one, so I can't speak in full about it. Um, there is a Kevin Hart commercial that's kind of funny that, that, that plays a joke <laughs> about it. You might have seen that. But, um, but yeah, we've just, uh, we don't necessarily have the bandwidth to go on a retreat at this moment. But we talked about just saying, hey, can we take one or two days and just pull back and be in silence and kind of set set a weekend up or just a couple of days where we know what we can do and just just be in that silence um yeah and i think that's going to be really interesting and so it'll be it'll, uh, maybe by the time this is out we can uh we'll be able to share how that went on another on another one but uh yeah, yeah there are so many different things that you can do uh that that would kind of fulfill these different types of of approaches yeah and I have been to a silence retreat. Um, it was actually integrated in with my yoga training. We did a lot of different things like that. And it is one of those things where, one, it brings your awareness to how much, how dependent you are on words, right? We forget how dependent we become on being able to express ourselves through our words. But words are a small fraction of how we communicate. It is nonverbal communication that makes up the bulk of our communication. And you begin to realize that when you stop leaning into words. And you realize people still know what you mean when you're not talking. And you also begin to really go inward. Because you stop expressing everything outside and processing everything outside, you begin to move everything into internal processing. And so it is a beautiful way of detoxing in many, many ways and internal processing. So if you're ever interested in something like that, then yes, I would say it's a lovely, lovely way to like take a weekend and just say, you know what? I'm not going to be talking this weekend, everyone. Let's just see how this goes. And you can still write down on pieces of paper if you really need to communicate something or, you know, we, most of us have the ability to text now. So you can just type something out on your phone. So I'm a huge advocate of doing at least one day, or if you really can't do that because you need to talk, at work or what have you, then take an hour or two hours and just be silent. I think it's an amazing thing to see how it triggers you or how it serves you, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's something that I, I hadn't thought about it just, but as you were talking, it just kind of dawned on me that, you know, sometimes it's a, a the burnout field could be in communication. Yeah. You know, in terms of how you're communicating to yourself, how you're communicating to others, how others are communicating to you, it just it's just overwhelming. There's just so much going on, and there's just almost too many too many inputs. Yeah. And so having having that as a you know in terms of burnout, just in general, it doesn't have to necessarily be at work or you know maybe family life or maybe it's hobbies or uh, you know there's so many aspects of what what can contribute to feeling. To feeling the burnout and to know that hey first of all first off you're a human it's you're not bad because you feel burned out like there's not something wrong with you or you know this kind of flows from our previous episode about disappointing others or being a disappointment mm -hmm. you're allowed time to reset like you're allowed time to recharge I mean, that's that's important we do it with our phones every day uh, we should if we're allowing that for our phones <laughs> we should be allowing that for ourselves and for those around us that's important too lift ourselves up and lift those around us who need that to say, yes, it's a safe, it's safe to do that. And, and you should absolutely go do that. You know, mm -hmm. if you're recharging 
all the time and you're not doing anything that might, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's a, there's a happy medium there, but, yeah. um, but in terms of actually just allowing yourself that time, just knowing that there are other aspects of what could be facilitating this feeling of burnout. And so, uh, yeah, when you brought up the idea of, of us doing that, I thought that was something I hadn't done and something that now that I'm, we're talking about it again, just like, oh, here's another, another great reason to uh, place, place ourselves into that experience and just see how it feels on the other side. Uh, I just did, I recently did a, uh, a three-day fast and that was a great, I mean, I, I feel exponentially better. Uh, after doing that so it's it's incredible just what what something like that can do to reset your body and just kind of get you in a whole different flow a uh, different mindset different body set like the, the whole emotional set spiritual set so there's intention purpose and feeling behind behind it in so many different ways yeah and when you combine a fast with doing a silence mm type of an event then you're really amping up so lots of different things you can explore but ultimately if you can just put down the electronics for a couple of hours that is a great first step if you can put down the electronics and not talk then you're taking a huge step if you can put down the electronics not talk and do a fast you got a trifecta. So that's awesome. And it will truly help reduce the level of burnout that you feel. It's like when you have to turn your phone off because too much is processing at once and it's just way overwhelmed and it can't really function properly. That's what you're doing. And so that's what you're doing for yourself. So you're just taking a moment to just quickly shut down for a minute, just shut down for a minute and then boot yourself back up and then you're back online and you're ready to go. Right? Repair those disk permissions. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending, jargon. On, yeah. depending on which one you got. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I know the next tip is something that is near and dear to your heart, which is mm. listening to your body. Yes. Right. When we feel burned out, Sometimes we become so disconnected from our body because we're so overwhelmed and so busy and we can have a backache or we can, or I mean, for me, it's so often in my neck and my shoulders and I'm like, oh, I'm going to power through. I'm just going to keep typing. I've got to get this done. But that pressure is there and I'm clenching my jaw for a reason. And if I don't listen to my body, then that pain pushes me over the threshold of burnout. And there are simple fixes that we can put into place to hear our body and still continue forward. And so do you want to talk about that? Because I know like this is near and dear to your heart. It is big time. Um, for a long time, I didn't realize how just in terms of my work environment, in terms of my office settings, like the way that I set myself up was actually hurting me immensely. Um, by, you know, looking down at my laptop, having my shoulders up here, my, you know, keyboard kind of up higher. Um, it just, it was very, um, for those who can't see me, it was like, I don't know, what is that word? Like you were crunch. rolling like, in like, rolling like one in. of those yeah. roly-poly bugs. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's a really great way to put it. Thank you. Um, and it, it just was putting so much strain on my neck and my back and my eyes. And, and it just, it, it wasn't working. And so um, you know, bringing up Anthony Balduzzi again, <laughs> who is an expert in just so many amazing things. Um, and uh, talked with him a lot about ergonomics of, of and he's just such a, a brilliant brilliant understanding of how the human form works and and how to be efficient and how to be ergonomic and allow for the body to uh, be in a state that gives you the opportunity to, to put in the effort and the work that you need to um, he is uh, not shy uh, when it comes to the hard work I mean, that guy is one of the hardest working people i've ever met in my life and he puts in hours i've literally seen it 
where it's all day. Um, but one of the amazing things that I've seen him do was set up an office that is very effective, so that he doesn't hurt his form. And that was one of the best things that I, I learned. So, you know, getting getting a separate monitor and putting up a little bit higher so that you're you're not like this or you're not like, you know, looking down or looking up, you're you're looking straight on and making sure your keyboard is actually uh, below your chest. Um, and so that you are more natural, just like you would when you sit down. Um, you know, you don't have your shoulders up by your ears. You can roll those shoulders back and 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 have them in a natural position and then let the keyboard be there you know getting an ergonomic mouse for example that's something we don't really think about um, but there's these great uh mice Meese, Meese. mouse moose <laughs> <laughs> um, not a moose <laughs> um there's there's this, a mouse you can get that is actually um for those again who aren't seeing this uh it's it's instead of like your hand is is flat palm down uh your hand is more vertical instead of horizontal mm -hmm. right because just like you know we naturally like when we shake a hand right it's it's not we're not doing a horizontal shake we're doing a vertical shake right yeah. and so the mouse almost fits in that way and that's helped me a ton by just having that like my forearms and carpal tunnel is just killing me and so the moment i switched to that just completely I mean, it's just amazing and so those little details, even getting a really great ergonomic chair that can adjust to uh, your your frame and and help support you, and so you can either lean back or lean forward or however is best for you to set up that approach, and then getting a standing desk, one that kind of raises up, so you know you're not just sitting for you know eight hours straight or something like that. That every maybe 45 minutes to an hour, you're standing up for 20 minutes and then you can sit back down. And um, we've even seen like, we got one of those um, treadmills that you know you can walk under the desk mm -hmm. just to kind of get you moving. Uh, we take time to uh, stretch, you know, putting a reminder every hour on your phone. Okay, boom, I just locked in an hour of great work. So now I'm gonna go stretch for 10 or 15 minutes and just move the body or go on a walk like something like we do or, um, you know, uh, go give Bruce a cuddle. Um, Bruce is our dog, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not a random Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where's the closest Bruce? Just a random Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's that's cool too. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are so many things that we can do to be active, so that work isn't just this drudging thing that that just ends up hurting our bodies long term. Yeah. Um, and this just even understanding that has made a, a world of difference for me yeah i need to get the memo yes <laughs> <laughs> um hi i'm amber thank you so much for watching if you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are it helps us more than we can possibly say it is so important though that when you start to feel the pain that you listen mm -hmm. and that you don't think, oh, I need to power through. Because the more that you adopt the power through mentality, the more damage you're doing to your form. And the more you start to hit that overwhelm and that burnout that, oh my gosh, this is just too painful and I can't do this anymore. I'm overwhelmed and I'm burnt out and I'm going to crash. So listen to your body. If you start to feel that pain kind of well up in a certain area, it's telling you it needs attention. Now there's a difference between a little bit of discomfort, which you can power through a bit, versus pain. That's telling you, hey, something's really not right here and we need to do something about it. And then looking into ergonomics to help support that, whether that's being at work or if you're doing something in your personal life that I know for working out, sometimes I would think, oh, I'm in pain. I've got to push through. And that to me would ultimately give me burnout in my workouts and then I wouldn't go back to the gym 
right? Or get you injured. Yes. Ultimately, even more so. And so burnout can happen in a lot of places in our lives. And our body tells us way before we listen sometimes. And if we can start to get more in tune with that, and I know you have a story even on that, because it's how you ended up injuring your back, is if you would have listened to the subtle signs, and you even had someone tell you before you injured your back, you're about to have an injury if you don't listen. And you were like, no. And you went forward because your body was screaming. And we all do that. We all, I can't say everyone, you know, obviously there are individuals who listen, but many of us feel like, oh, I can push through. And then we hit the tipping point and burnout takes over and our bodies are burnt out too and they collapse on us. So I know you've shared the story before, but for some individuals who might be joining us for the first time, or maybe they've joined us before, but they haven't heard the story, Mm -hmm. do you mind sharing what happened and what your body was attempting to tell you? And you were like, I got this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so at the time I was, I was 21, I was in college, you know, um, many of us feel invincible at that age and at that time in our lives. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was, uh, it was related to golf. Um, I ended up having a herniated disc explosion in my neck, my back, three cracked ribs, vertigo, and so as all at the same time. And, uh, up to that point, I was really pushing all the boundaries, um, in terms of my body and the form, you know, I was, I was working out, you know, seven to 10 times a week during that time of my life. Uh, I was drinking heavily. I was socializing heavily. You weren't Uh, drinking like juice. No, it was not, not, no, no, that was like alcohol (laughs) drinking. Um, there would be some juice in the mornings, but, um, but not like in a, it was like, you know, Jamba juice, you know, okay. which I thought was, you know, healthy and stuff. But um, I was like, oh, this counteracts everything. <laughs> <laughs> I can drink all the alcohol in the evening and then a Jamba juice in the morning. Yeah. We love Jamba juice. So, yes, yeah, know. nothing against Jamba juice, but that's, it's, you know, that's not the correct math. Yeah. <laughs> it did not add up. <laughs> it did not add up. Um, and, uh, you know, eating a lot of inflammatory foods. Uh, I wasn't really sleeping a ton because, you know, I was staying up late and I was getting up early and, you know, I still had, I was double majoring at that time. We were traveling for golf. Uh, so, you know, and, and having an active social life, you know, all these things were going on. I was burning the candle at, at both ends, a hundred percent. And I happened to go right before my injury, um, in March, 2010, I, um, I, I went, had a friend introduce me to someone um, who provided a style um, like neuromuscular, basically, uh, mm-hmm. therapy. And and I, I had never heard of this. This was kind of a little bit out there for me at the time of my life. Like now it's like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, but at that time that it was yeah. it was way left field for me. Yeah. And so I went and had a session and the individual was super nice. I mean, very kind. But, you know, uh, part of it was kind of touching like a part of my stomach, right, where I was feeling pain in my stomach. And from that, she's like, oh, you really got to watch out. You're you're about to have a back injury. It's like, I understand my, like, it's on the front, not the back, right? So <laughs> That's my I was stomach. like, you don't know what not you're talking about. Not thinking stomach muscles are yeah, tied to the back, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. It was my lack of knowledge and awareness and, and just attempting to find a reason for it to be stupid or silly or you know, just because I didn't understand. So it was just the typical response of being afraid of something that I didn't know and I didn't want to hear. And so just letting it go Mm -hmm. and just like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Like That's ridiculous. She was spot on. And within literally within weeks um, that I had that major injury uh, playing golf. So um, and it completely transformed my entire life trajectory. So it wasn't just a little thing. It was a huge, huge thing. And so I'm grateful it happened, but also, you know, could, could there have been something, you know, my body was telling me over and over and over again that something was going on. And, you know, there are a ton of different ways that I could have listened and 
chosen a different path, but I just was so oblivious and getting in my own way that something major had to happen and get me to listen. And so I'm sure that there are people listening who have had different types of experiences like that that can relate. And this probably resonates in some way, shape, or form that we just kind of get so much in our own way that we just, you know, something major has to happen in our lives in order for us to be like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But had you listened, maybe your life could have taken the same trajectory and you wouldn't have been hurt as badly. I mean, there's the potential that there would have still been a back injury, but maybe it wouldn't have been as devastating. These are the things that we step back and we look at, right? Yeah. Because your body was signaling. And by that point, there was already damage, but could you have lessened the damage? Mm -hmm. Could you have done something more had you listened to what the wonderful practitioner was telling you and what your body was telling you? And these are the things that when we get to burnout, when we get to overwhelm, if we listen at any stage, we can do something. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to be willing to say, oh, well, I've gone this far. Let's just see it all the way through. Well, no, there's always the point of choice where we can do something. Right. There's always a choice point. Yeah. And recognizing that when, when you say listen to your body, well, there are other aspects like your body holds, at least we feel, like your soul, right? And so mm -hmm. when you have your thoughts, your emotions, and then your actual soul and spirit, there are aspects of your body that we might not be listening to, right? Yeah. And that's definitely where I was. Like my injury was not just a physical in injury. Um, thanks to you and understanding at a deeper level, I didn't realize how much uh, the mental burnout I was having, how much emotional burnout I was having, and how much spiritual burnout I was having. And so this, this result of this massive debilitating injury was a byproduct of me not listening to all the areas in my life that were screaming out to say, hey, pay attention. Yeah. And so when we do talk about burnout, it is, it is, it's not just our body yelling at us. Oftentimes that's because there's something else that's a byproduct of, of, of uh, something that we're feeling. You know, maybe we are uh, emotionally drained and we don't even really realize it. We're, as we talked about in the last one, we're not just getting over things. We're not actually getting through them. We're not taking the time to communicate or talk about it. Um, you know, we're mentally uh, burnt out because we're just taking on too much. We're overthinking. We're in our heads so much. We're not dropping down into our heart and allowing ourselves to actually feel something yeah. and, and, and move through it and just kind of give our, our, our minds a break. Or spiritually, maybe we're just spiritually burnt out. We have, maybe we're frustrated because we don't understand where we fit spiritually, like, or, or if we feel like we do, but you know, or everyone around us does, like, I don't feel the same, you know, and, and, and so, uh, or, you know, hey, I've, I've felt something for a long time in this one specific faith, but now I, I don't feel called to that anymore, you know, so there's a lot of different forms of what burnout can look like spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. Yeah, great point. And in many ways, that, that leads to the third, which is relationships, right? Um, sometimes a lot of the things that we feel put us in the boxes that lead to burnout come from relationships in our life, whether it's family, it's friends, it's our careers. Those relationships matter and can lead to the burnout if every relationship in our life adds stress. And we're not saying that you just start cutting out all those relationships, right? And I have heard that in certain circles. It's like, go in and start pulling relationships like weeds. Well, that can actually add to your burnout, right? It can add to the stress and really begin to add more chaos than we're aware of. So... There's another option, which is starting to add in relationships that feed your soul while you're looking at the relationships that are causing the burnout and ways that you can shift the dynamic 
of those relationships. Because if you have positive relationships in your life, then you're learning from those positive relationships, those relationships that feed you. And you can learn from those dynamics and place some of that into the other relationships that are maybe not as well in motion, right? And so maybe those relationships that you have, whether they're friendships or I'll start at the beginning, maybe you grew up in a family where the dynamics, they didn't know how to have positive interpersonal relationships. And therefore, you didn't learn how to have positive interpersonal relationships. Then you go out into the world and you're like, I don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to see what happens. And often when that's the situation, we begin to attract the same into our life because we just don't know. We don't know. We don't have the basis for what a positive relationship looks like. So then we take whatever relationships come to us and we need to seek and build those positive relationships, which means we need to first understand what a positive relationship looks like. And that means we need to craft it according to what we know a positive relationship can look like, which means we need to take the first step to understanding what that means to us right? That requires research on our part. And so instead of getting burnt out by letting all of these relationships that are not working for us come at us, we need to pause. We need to figure out what a positive relationship looks like to us. Then we need to create one of those positive relationships in our life. And generally, we're not going to be able to do that in an existing relationship because those dynamics are already set. So we craft a new friendship relationship and get that dynamic flowing. Then we get the practice and we understand how that goes. Then we can take what we've learned and start introducing it into other relationships in our lives. And suddenly you start to see the snowball effect happening, not because you're forcing it, but because you're learning yourself how to be in a positive relationship, right? Mm. And so it has to start with you, but you can't just hop into a relationship that's already in motion and think, I'm going to change this puppy. This is happening. I'm going to change it because I'm going to change them you're going to get burnt out. And the other person's going to be like, well, what do you think you're doing? And if you just go and start weeding out all of the relationships in your life, then you're going to get burnt out that way too, because you're going to be so sad. So if you can take and create what you know you desire a positive relationship to be and get practice in that, then you have the skills to begin to integrate, if that makes sense. Hundred percent, it makes sense. It's that's a beautiful position and understanding because yeah, it's it's I've heard that too, and I've actually done that unfortunately, where I just you know cut relationships out, and to this day, you know, there's definitely some some regret around that, um, and so that's it's tough. It, it really is, um, even if they weren't the right people at the right time, you know, for me. Um, you know, there's ways that I could have handled it now that I have more maturity and clarity uh, in terms of my communication. Um, there's other ways it could have been done. And there's there were positives to it. So instead, of, you know, as you just said, it would have been nice to, to explore and understand because, you know, maybe I was contributing a lot more to the, to the negativity of it or the burnout of it or the toxicity of it, if you will, that's creating some of the burnout. And so we have to remember that in every relationship, we are the common denominator and that there is an aspect that we are playing in it, whether we're aware of that or not. But ultimately, um, probably the best way to really understand it and build those positive relationships, start with building one with yourself. And so when we think about burnout and we think about relationships, it's like very often do we think, 
well, what about our, how much of is our own relationship with ourself causing the burnout? You know, are we constantly yelling at ourselves? Are we constantly putting ourselves down? Um, are we in reinforcing these ideas of our lack of self worth and, and low confidence? And and uh, are, you know, are we even being our own best friend? Right? I mean, these it's really really hard to not feel burnout when you are the source of the burnout yourself. Because it's good to look externally to internally and all these other aspects saying, okay, what everything around me is creating the burn, the burnout. It's great. Definitely do that. But also see what is it that you're doing within yourself and how you're talking to yourself, how you're thinking, how you're feeling, how you're connecting. Um, you know, what is that? How is that contributing to this burnout? Um, cause I know like just shifting my mindset, building that more positive m mental mind frame and a positive self relationship, um, that you beautifully lay out in, in the upcoming book, uh, silence your inner critic love, mm -hmm. you do such an incredible job. Um, and we're going to have a link below that people can check that out and get on the wait list for that. Um, but that is the reason why this is, you know, it's a practical guide to building a positive self relationship is because it is the core in terms of how you interact with the rest of the world it has to start with self. If there's disharmony within yourself, there's going to be disharmony outside of yourself. And so until you have the tools to effectively create that harmony within, then you can start to experience that harmony outside of yourself. And you can start to breathe that love that you're giving yourself into the relationships around you. And it becomes more sustainable. And that then that burnout starts to fall away because it's not like a take, take, take in terms of uh, you know, a cup that's just giving, giving, giving without, without any refills. You become that overflowing cup as we've, can, as we've talked about many, many times. So that way the cup is full and it's still giving to the, the other cups around it. And, and that's just, that in and of itself can be a reinvigorating aspect and allow you to move through burnout in a way that is uh, sustainable for, for the rest of your life. Yeah. And ultimately, the more you learn about yourself and the relationships, some may ultimately choose to fall away. That might happen. That happens for most people throughout life. But it's not because you're like, oh, I'm going to go in and weed out my friends. It's because you're learning the type of relationships that feed you and what you desire in a relationship that doesn't cause burnout for you in a relationship. And so you're applying those skills that you learn within the context of the different types of relationships that you're in. And so then naturally things occur versus just systematically you're going in and making arbitrary decisions. And that's a very different approach. And you no longer feel that stress that causes the burnout. And I would offer that's what I've seen that's very different in this approach. And when you know what you desire in different types of relationships, you feel empowered. You feel so much more empowered within. And you also feel more flexible because you know what are the absolute this is my boundary. And in this type of a setting, like your boundary in a work setting in those relationships is going to be very different than your boundary in a partnership setting is going to be very different than your boundary with your in-laws or your family. And once you know what those absolutes are versus the, oh, you know, this is my preference, but it doesn't always have to be this way versus your, I don't care, you know, I'm very flexible in this area. Then you can go into any situation and know where your lines in the sand are and you don't feel so on the defense all the time. So you're not burnt out just from the sheer fact of feeling like you have to defend yourself all the time. And that can cause a lot of burnout, right? Brilliant. So true. But many of us just have no real set boundaries or guidelines to say, 
this is how I'm going to interact in the world. And this is how I'm going to let the world interact with me in these relationship settings, in these different places. And so I'm just constantly on the defense. And I don't know if how I'm interacting is going to make people happy. And so I'm causing disappointment. And so therefore I am disappointing. And so we're just constantly in this cycle. And then we're burnt out. And we feel like all of our relationships are awful. And that's just, how do you not get burnt out? But if you can come at it from that place of, all right, I'm learning who I am. I know what I desire in these places. And I'm practicing with this relationship so that I can really hone those skills to roll it out then that's a place of empowerment. It's absolutely beautifully said, my love. Thank you. And take from this what fits, right? There is no one size fits all. So take what resonates always from any advice that anybody gives you, yes. right? See it as little nuggets and go, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds like it could work for me. But as with all things, these are three tips that could really assist in reducing burnout. But these three tips could spark something completely different for you, where you're like, oh, well, that's good information, but here's how I take that. And here's how I'm going to apply it for my life. Otherwise, you could take these three tips, attempt to shoehorn yourself into it, and then get more burnt out and be like, why did they tell me to do this? Now I feel more burnt out than ever. Well, if it's going to cause more stress in your life, then that just means that these aren't the three exact tips for you. But take from it and create your own structure that reduces the burnout instead of creates more burnout, right? That's the whole point. You have to know what's going to fit for you. Listen to your body in the way that your body is talking to you. If ergonomics isn't the thing for you, and because you're ergonomically all set up, then listen to your body and how it's speaking to you. Does it need different nutrition? And so nutrition is actually something that's going to reduce burnout for you. Find what that is for you. If a digital detox isn't what you need, but maybe you just need some time to step out of a city where there's noise everywhere and you need to detox from all the sounds and go into a more serene environment. Maybe that's the type of detox that you need. And if you've got like the bomb when it comes to relationships and all of your relationships are stellar, then maybe the relationship that you could foster a little more is your internal one to know more about yourself and your self connection with your soul. So just take the categories and go, okay, where, where could I reduce some burnout in these areas? Love that. Yeah. And if you're willing to comment below, It'd be amazing to hear the different tips uh, that you may have to add to this that have really worked for you. Uh, you know, we're, we're a community. We love receiving different ideas. I mean, that's part of what this is all about today is, is for us to kind of share. We know there are so many. We never prescribe one way of doing things. Our goal through this podcast and through all of our, uh, all of our courses, communities, et cetera, anything that we bring forward is to just show and expand an awareness. Uh, to because the first the first step to more knowledge is expanding awareness. We can have that awareness, and we can gain more knowledge. And so, if you can, you know, help us in this journey, you know, share the comments below. What has worked for you? What is connected with you? Uh, what have you seen that really made an impact uh, on your life in this regard? Uh, that would just really help out the community, help out others. You know, share below, and, and let's kind of. Let's get some some movement going and 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 help each other through this burnout. We can feel our our lightest and brightest selves, and so we can continue making an amazing impact on this world together uh, through the through by being the very best versions of who we are. Mm -hmm.